I'm really very fascinated to produce bantam chickens as well. Because these bantam chickens, although small, has big price in the market. Yesterday, we made a good harvest as well with the white squash. Now, it's time to harvest the bitter melon. And we can eat this fresh. See that? I consider it a remarkable success of being able to produce hundreds of animals and being surrounded by different types of animals early in the morning is just a joyful activity and self-fulfilling. And actually, when I envisioned to develop this farm, I really don't have the idea as to how and where I'm going to start. But I just made the first step. I clean the surroundings. And this is what happened now. It turned into a productive farm. We have vegetables, we have hundreds of ducks, and we have hundreds of chickens. We have thousands of hito, and we have the stilapia, and we have these birds, and many more coming. We're aiming to have a massive goat farming as well. And this proves that in life, if we are going to persevere and will not entertain the negative thoughts, then someday, somehow, we will achieve our goals. I'm really very fascinated to produce bantam chickens as well. Because these bantam chickens, although small, has big price in the market. Imagine, this rooster alone will cost us around 10,000 pesos. So, it's profitable if you're gonna raise as well bantam chickens because you will not spend too much about the food. Because they are low maintenance, they will only eat a small amount of food. And you will see that they are so elegant. You will even observe that they don't have insecurities. They are actually uh, fighting with the big chickens that we have here. They're not even threatened by the big roosters that we have here, such as the Shamo chicken. The Shamo chickens are big chickens that we envision to also breed here in the farm. And this kind of chicken will even weigh up to seven kilos. So I'm really very excited to have more of this kind of chicken. The smallest chicken in the world, which is the Bantam chicken, and the tallest chicken of the world, which is the Shamo Dumpulai. If we have the smallest chicken in the world, we also have the tallest chicken in the world. And you look at Hercules, you can estimate the size of this by having this bottle of mineral water. You will see that the height of the chicken is much, much taller than this one. And you, will, and you can estimate how big is this chicken. This is only 11 months old. And I still believe that this can reach up to seven kilos because for now, this weighs only six kilos. I am very enthusiastic about upgrading the breeding line of our chicken because it will provide us good market and also it will help us promote the upgrading of the native chickens here in the Philippines. We're not only doing good in the production or breeding of our chicken, 
but we are also doing good in other aspects of farming. such as the plantation of our bitter melon. And yesterday we made a good harvest as well with the white squash. Now it's time to harvest the bitter melon. And as you can see, there are hanging fruits that are due for harvest. And just this morning, I harvested some one, two, three, four, five, six, seven big fruits of this bitter melon and I think we can harvest some more. There are still more here hanging but the big one should be spared because I wanted to get the seeds out of this when this is already ripe. And you can see here a big fruit. I intentionally did not bother this because I wanted to get the seeds out of this when this becomes ripe. So we have here the big one and another big one here and we will spare this. We will not harvest that one but all the rest should be harvested today. So we will get this one. Wow, this is amazing, really amazing. Because we can just grow these fruits in a short period of time, less than a month to be exact. And you will see also that there are still more fruits to come there are many fruits because of the flowers, actually. And I can sense that by the entire cropping period, we can harvest more than maybe 500 fruits of this bitter melon. You know, guys, if you grow your own fruit, you're confident that if you're gonna eat that fresh, you're, you're free from the pesticide. Because I did not use pesticide, we only use organic fertilizers and I thank God because the fruits are actually not affected even without the use of the pesticide and we can eat this fresh. I'm used to eating this one because this is good for lowering down the cholesterol. See? Very fresh. It's bitter, but it gives us a very exciting taste that would actually have a good benefit to our health. Eating this fresh, because you know that it's free from pesticide, is one of the achievements that we can make in the farm. Eating fresh vegetables. Mmm, so yummy so delicious and eating fresh fruits free from pesticides would somehow give us long life and this is the achievement that we have made in this farm Wow, we have harvested more than 10 fruits. Come on here. I will show you how many fruits we have harvested early this morning. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 fruits of the bitter melon. These two dozens of bitter melon fruit are actually a testament of hard work, a testament of hope and perseverance that if we're gonna dream and do simple steps towards the realization of our dreams, we will soon reap 
the fruits of our labor. And you can look at how we designed our tree list here. You know, I'm so eager to produce more of this bitter melon because this is very good for our health, especially if this is produced very organically. And you will see that this tree list is in preparation for the stems of this that are about to crawl up. And we envision to use this portion here for the ampalaya. And planting melon and red squash may be one of the best options that we can do for this farm. But for the meantime, just be excited with me as we're gonna plant this bitter melon over there and over there. And then as soon as we're gonna cover this area here, we will also plant azola. The azola that's good for the health of our chickens are also best in a shaded area, especially in area like this. So these are future plans that I think doable, future plans that I believe achievable in our own little way, in our own capacity, without spending too much money. You guys can see that we are now on the 80% completion of our dream goat house. See that? It looks now very elegant. And today we're gonna fix the roofings and then tomorrow or in our next upload, you're gonna witness the entire structure that's completely done with roofings. And I envisioned in the future to have a dairy business out of goat's milk and we will start with 50 goats, I think. The Anglo-Nobian breed is a good breed that we can also use for that business. And I don't know if we can realize this for this year, but since we already have this uh, big space, this big house for our goats, maybe little by little, we can accomplish those things. So thank you guys for watching. And if you are not subscribed to this channel, May I humbly ask you to please subscribe and hit that notification bell because we are uploading videos regularly. And if you will subscribe, of course, you will be notified of our future uploads. See you in my next video, only here at Dexter's World.